Hello YouTube, this is Crosscheck and welcome once again to another very exciting update from the Microsoft Flight Simulator team. Finally, episode number 3, Aerodynamics has been released. You can find the link for that video on this video's description. I will do a quick rundown of what we saw in this video and also talk about some new cool updates. Let's start by jumping into the episode's 3 rundown. In this video, 5 areas of improvement regarding the aerodynamics and physics are covered. Number 1. Improved core of physics engine. Number 2. Rewriting of the aircraft systems. Number 3. New aerodynamics simulation. Number 4. New worldwide atmospheric air mass simulation. And number 5. 3D environment versus air mass. Ok, let's start with the improved core of the physics engine. We now have better collision modeling with the environment. Thanks to this, slope runways are now supported and it is now possible to land in any real-life landable surface, even if it is sloped. Meaning you don't necessarily have to land in a runway, landing works anywhere it is physically possible. To make slopes work, the friction model of the aircraft had to be improved, tires now correctly simulate dynamic friction and static friction, the rubber now behaves correctly on different surfaces such as tarmac, cement, grass, dirt, etc. If the aircraft skids, it skids realistically. The bumps in the ground are now realistically simulated. Same for the braking, the aircraft can now come into a full stop in a slope, making the transition from dynamic friction to static friction. Amazingly, this was not possible in FSX, but now it is. The integration system of the simulator has been rewritten. This results in more steps per second, steps can be considered frames if you wish, so a higher frame rate. We now have a adaptive timestamp, this adapting to the monitor's frame rate, giving a smoother experience, and if the frame rate dips, the simulation is not affected. The integration system works in a more realistic manner. This directly fixes an issue with the previous versions of Flight Simulator, where the aircraft felt as flying on rails. The old integrator just didn't like change, and forced the aircraft to move more in a straight line. Inertial matrices have also been improved. When the aircraft rotates, yaws, pitches or rolls, it just feels much more realistic. Now let's jump into the rewriting of the aircraft systems. The load factor simulation has been improved. This results in the turn coordinator being better simulated. It now acts realistically when the aircraft has a asymmetric load. Fuel consumption now behaves realistically depending on the altitude, matching the POH of the aircraft. Flaps, gears and external tanks are now simulated instead of just being hard-coded to be on or off. They are now actual physical elements being simulated against the airflow. They realistically modify the aerodynamics of the aircraft. The icing system has been improved, there is actual icing simulation now and occurs realistically under different scenarios. For those of you who like the old simulation, the legacy simulation is still available and the users can change to the legacy one if they so desire. Anyway, all aircrafts are being reviewed by real-life pilots who have spent at least hundreds of hours in a specific aircraft. In some cases, this is done by test pilots directly from the aircraft manufacturer, as to make sure they control exactly as they would in real life. There are many parameters that are not found in the POH, such as how fast an aircraft rolls with what level of input at what airspeed. But real life pilots do have a feeling for that, so it has been an incredible asset to have for a realistic simulation of the real thing. Let's now jump into the new aerodynamics simulation. It has been reworked from the ground up, the aircraft is now subdivided into thousands of surfaces. Each surface has its own wind directions, its own air pressure and its own humidity. An example for this in action is for your right wing when it enters a cloud while your left one does not. The wings will have different winds, turbulences, pressure, humidity, etc. Each surface has a realistic airflow simulation, this resulting in a very realistic stall simulation. Surfaces obviously affect airflow, so some surfaces can disrupt airflow so much that it affects other surfaces. All of this allowing much more aerodynamics and the ability to enter different spins in a realistic manner. Ok, now let's jump into the new worldwide atmospheric air mass simulation. The air mass is a massive improvement, it is simulated globally and realistically. Every area in the world has its own simulation of air, it knows where the air is flowing everywhere. This is fed into the aerodynamics of the aircraft. The volumetric clouds match airflow, such as turbulences, up and down draft, there is a native support of storms, supercells, TCUs, 
aka towering cumulus clouds. A type of cloud created because of lots of updraft and when very big the updraft is outside while the downdraft is created in the inside. An extremely dangerous scenario for small aircraft and a lot of turbulence for big aircraft. It is awesome to see TCUs being correctly simulated around us. The airflow simulation can be seen in this video. Each particle simulates independently. When entering clouds it can be seen how they take different directions and how turbulence may be present. Alright, jumping into the last point now, 3D environment versus air mass. The air mass is affected by the shape of the world. This can be buildings, forests, mountains, valleys, etc. All of these shapes affect the world airflow. When flying above these features, realistic up or down drafts will be present, of course also with its turbulent air. All of these bumps will be felt. Over here it can be seen the airflow going through mountains, the simulated up and down drafts where the air collides and creates turbulence. A magnificent preview, without a doubt. And this is basically it for the aerodynamics, an absolute, absolute treat. Let's now jump into the rest of the updates. Okay, now continuing with the November 21st, 2019 development update, they scream for... Now, regarding the SDK update. They mentioned they are doing good progress with the SDK development, still in early stages but they intend to provide an initial version of the SDK to third-party developers before the end of the year. Obviously, they are interested in involving third parties early in the development process and to give them the ability to influence priorities and how to author the SDK. They have had some third-party developer visits on-site with the team and the Flight Simulator team has been incredibly excited by the optimism and feedback that they received so far. I am guessing one of these third parties has been PMDG, as they already mentioned, they are going to be pivoting a lot of their resources into the new flight simulator, so clearly they were one of those third party developers that may be really excited with the new project, and that is really, really good to hear. Initially the SDK will offer the ability to author planes, sceneries and the custom missions, and for those that have a preference for using FSX tools, SimConnect will be supported. There will be support for additional modern standards like HTML for UI and GITF for 3D models. Okay, and regarding the feature discovery series, we just did a quick rundown of episode 3. Episode 4 can be expected next week. Super excited about that, the 27th of this month, November. We have a development roadmap update. It is a preview for December and January. We will look at it in a little bit. Regarding the feedback snapshot, a deliverable that I am really excited about has been delayed a week in order to prevent overlap with the development roadmap update. So we can expect version 1 of the feedback snapshot of the flight simulator next week. Now regarding the, the XO19 event, I quote, A heartfelt thank you to everyone that visited us at the XO event. We had an incredible turnout and the team genuinely enjoyed the opportunity to sit down and play the latest demo with so many fellow flight simulator enthusiasts. And of course, next update next week. Now let's go and check out the development roadmap. So now as we know, next week we have the, the new feature discovery series episode 4 cockpits. We got the tech alpha number 2 recruiting. And we now have the feedback snapshot version 1 to be previewed by the insiders. Okay, so now regarding December. Okay, so on December 5th, a development roadmap update a media update and a Tech Alpha 2 timeline update. December the 12th, we're gonna have another media update, partnership announcement series update, feedback snapshot version 1 for the general, insider preview of the development roadmap update for January and February, and Tech Alpha 2 recruiting ends. December 19th, we have another media update, SDK update, and feedback snapshot version 2 insider preview. On early January, we can expect a general development roadmap update and the general feedback snapshot version 2. Mid-January, another media update, partnership announcement series update, and insider preview of a development roadmap. On late January, another media update, lots of media updates, that's pretty cool, always fun. Insider preview feedback snapshot version 3, and a SDK update. So yeah, there you go, that is pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed, thank you very much for sticking around, and happy flying, cross-checkout.